Hello everyone. Hope you're having a good afternoon and you're excited for the rest of the week. I've just got a quick housekeeping announcement. So we still have uh, slots open for session chairs on Thursday and Friday. Uh, and also if you've already signed up to be a session chair, I assure you the schedule will now show your name next to the session that you're chairing. Uh, session chairing is a great way to be involved in the conference and maybe like have some one-on-one -on -one time with the speaker who you really want to ask questions of. Uh, and as you can see, it's really easy. Even I can do it. Um, and without further ado, I'd love to introduce Leonardo. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Eldorado since 2011. Uh, and I have been working with uh, open source since 2012. Sorry? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, I've been working with open source uh, projects, and uh, today I'm here to talk about some challenges and discoveries we have made bringing some open source software to PowerPC64 Little Angel World. So, about this presentation, um, I'm going to to uh, to bring some the experience that we had with the the open source software, uh, the difference between the architectures we have found about X and the Power Architecture, uh, and the, the solutions we have made uh, to make the software run on the Power Platform. So uh, we have worked on some other projects. Uh, the first one was the Overt, that's a virtualization management platform. Uh, another one is the JRub. Uh, we worked on LuaJIT as well. That's um, uh, this one was a, a big one. Uh, we needed to to add a, a lot of code in order to to make it run on on power. Uh, the the pull request is still open on the community, uh, waiting for the reviewers. Uh, the HHVM, that's the Facebook Hack and PHP Interpreter, that uh, was a big one as well. We have sent some patches on uh, the Open JDK and the LLDB, that's the LLVM debugger. This is a still go ongoing project, so uh, we expect to finish that on one or two months. So I'm going to, to base this presentation on HHVM chains. Uh, that was a, a big project, and we, we had a, a, a good relationship with the community. So what's the HHVM? As I said, it's a hack and PHP interpreter made by Facebook. Uh, and it uh, is a just-in-time compiler. So what is this? Uh, here it's a, a flow. Uh, a, from a very top view of how it works. Uh, initially, we have the code, that's a PHP code, that is compiled to a bytecode. A normal interpreter here just would run the bytecode. Uh, the HHVM has the option to disable the JIT as well. So uh, if it's disabled, it just run the bytecode. And if it's enabled, it comes here and checks it if that bytecode has a red and native code, if yes, it's just run the, the native code. Otherwise, it checks if the, the bytecode is hot. That means if it's being executed a lot. Uh, if no, it just run the bytecode. If yes, it's compiled to bytecode and then run the native code. Uh, here, the compiled to native box, uh, was the part of the code that we most uh, contributed to the community. I'm going to expand this. So it receives a bytecode, and then uh, an intermediate representation is generated based on that. And later, it's generated a VASM, that's a virtual assembly. Initially, the, the HHVM had just the X support. And then we have added the power and later appeared the ARM. Uh, the execution of the HHVM, uh, when it needs to run the, the translated code, 
uh, it needs to call some helper functions. For example, the interpreter is running in C++, C++ code, and then to, in order to enter inside the Git area, it needs to call uh, helpers fun helper functions to make some uh, adjusts uh, in order to enter in the area and exit it. So, starting the, the challenges and discoveries, uh, we have fixed that our first target on this project, project was uh, make the interpret mode, mode run on Power Architecture. Uh, so, thinking uh, about the interpreter, uh, it wouldn't be so hard because uh, it doesn't use any assembly structure. So, the, sh the changes we have made was uh, on the sub-project project Foley, that's a Facebook open source library, uh, that we just added some uh, async instructions that uh, the Facebook had added for X architecture. So then we added for power as well. And the per compatible regular expressions that we just need to update to the upstream version uh, to make it, it available for power machine. And then make some changes inside the HHVM code to add the power uh, as a supported architecture. So, uh, theoretically, if you think uh, about the interpreter, uh, just these changes would be enough to, to make the, the, the interpreter uh, part run. So, but it didn't. Uh, we start to have some issues uh, uh, on, the, on the execution, and we start to analyze that. Uh, our first issue was that some tests were failing with segmentation flow. Uh, and it was failing inside the PHP extensions. Uh, extension on, uh, on HHVM uh, is uh, a place that a developer uh, may uh, add a, a method. Uh, then you can call this method inside your PHP code. So, uh, this function, uh, was receiving a wrong uh, val parameter value. This is uh, an example of an extension. And we, here we have the parameters. The first one is the return type, that, that's a string. The first one is the class name that, uh, that the method will be available. The format currency is the method name. The value is the first parameter that the, the function will receive. And the currency is the second parameter. So this is an example how uh, to declare an extension. Uh, for the interpreter, uh, when calling an, an extension, uh, it needs to, to, to call, to, to make a, a generic call because uh, a, a function can have any parameters and can have, can have different types of parameters. So for X architecture, the, the rules we have found in the, the HHVM was that uh, uh, this group of registers are the arguments for our arguments. This one is for returning value. This group one is, for, is for, for floating point values. So, uh, following the rules, uh, the RAX is allocated for uh, the returning value. The RGI is the first one here and is allocated to handle the object reference when calling the method. And here we have the first par parameter of the function that uh, is related with the value. Uh, it uses the first floating point register. And then we have the, the last parameter, that is the currency, that uses the RSI. So, following the same rules for power architecture that has this group of, of uh, register for arguments, this one for returning value, and this group for floating point arguments, we would have the R3 for returning value, Therefore, to handle the, ref the reference for the, the object, the F1 as the first parameter, 
the R, in the R6 for the second parameter. So uh, when al analyzing the execution, we have seen that the R5 the R had the, the correct value, but the function being called was using the R6. And then we started to, to check the documentation and we found out that for power architecture, there is a different rule when allocating the raster for a, a call. So, uh, uh, they have, uh, it has an a, a index to, to count the, the, the rasters, and then it's allocated like, like this. If I'm, uh, I'm allocating the R3 for return value, I just updated the general purpose raster index. So then I allocated the R4, the index is updated again. But when allocating a floating point value, uh, not just the, the general, not just the floating point index is updated, but the general purpose raster index as well. So then uh, the function is waiting the next parameter in the R4. R6 register. That's why the, the segmentation for was happening because uh, the, the R6 raster had garbage. Uh, so uh, we were passing the values on R3, R4, F1, and R5. And the function was weighting the values in R3, R4, F1, and R6. So that's why the issue was happening. The solution here, we just added uh, this rule for Power PowerPC uh, to update the general purpose raster reference number. So inside the code, you, uh, we could see that this uh, was the, the generic call it was using uh, before the solution, and later it was using this one because we need to pass uh, one more raster in this call that is the R5. So in this case, when allocating the, the R5 raster, we just pass zero. So the function is not using, uh, and then the correct value is in the R6 raster. So the interpreter still didn't work. And then we start to analyze what was happening. Uh, some tests were failing with wrong value. This was one of the issue, uh, one of the most difficult issues to analyze because we didn't make a lot of changes on the interpreter uh, and the, the test case was failing. And we knew that the, the, the issue was not on the test case, it was the, inside the interpreter. So the way we, we checked this, this issue was make two sections of debugging, one of with X architecture and another with power architecture, and then we find out where it was diversion. So the, the issue here is that X architecture has by default a signed char and power PC architecture has an unsigned. And we have uh, a problem here when casting this value to integer. So an example here, I have this function that receives a uh, name in the uh, flag of uh, reference to char. And then uh, if I have this if here, uh, with this condition for X architecture, it's okay. Uh, it's possible to have a minus one, F but for power architecture it's impossible because it's uh, unsigned value and, and it will never be minus one. So the solution here, we just changed the type for int t and the places that we needed a char, we just uh, uh, used the signed uh, word uh, to say that that char needs to be signed. So the interpreter finally worked. Uh, and here, uh, I start with the issues on the JIT part. The first big issue uh, uh, for power architecture was that uh, it, in X architecture, uh, it has a push and pop instructions. Uh, for uh, power architecture, uh, 
doesn't have this kind of structures. And the framing uh, of this architecture is allocated uh, when calling the function. So I cannot push information on the stack. I, I just need to allocate the size and then later save uh, the information on the pre-allocated area. So uh, the solutions here we have thought about was allocate, previously allocate the memory inside the frame, but we didn't know how many information would be saving on the stack. Allocate another part of the memory, but need, uh, this would need a control mechanism. So we didn't uh, want to add a, a control mechanism to save this information. And then we just changed the way the frame is allocated. So uh, inside the GT area, the frame is allocated like X architecture. Just to, to explain here uh, how it works, here I have uh, a stack frame, a stack for X architecture, and here for power architecture. So when call, calling a function, uh, what happens? In X architecture, it just push the return address on the stack, save the back chain, and then it has a space to save resters or any information it needs. And then I can push any information here on the stack until the, the call of the next function. So that's okay, that works. For power architecture, in the beginning of the function, the, the frame is created entirely. So uh, it, it allocates the, the space and it closes the frame with the back chain. Here, if I save any information here, I will be writing in a, in a red zone of the stack. So uh, if I call another function, the information would be overwritten. So how we changed the frames for, uh, for power architecture? Uh, remember that I said in, in the beginning of the presentation that uh, there are some helper functions. Well, here we use that functions to, uh, to make some uh, difference when calling the GT area. Uh, here, it's a stub log that's a VASM that closes the frame. And here we have the call, uh, that's a VASM that call an external function. So, for example here, this is a, a frame, a, a standard frame of power architecture. So I have here a space for the returning address and the back chain. Uh, another thing here, uh, this return address is regarding to the function that's been called, okay? Uh, the, uh, so the return address of a function uh, is saved on the previous frame. And then if I'm entering in the GT area, uh, this, the, the the helper function uh, is executed and then the stub log of this function just save the return address here and leave the stack this way. So then I can save any information that I want on the stack, make some push and pop information, and then when calling a function inside the GT area, the stub log is executed, which save the return address and save the back chain. Inside the GT area, the, the behavior of stub log is this, and just in the beginning of the, when entering the GT area, the stub log does this. So if I have another call inside the GT area, it does the same. Uh, I have the save area, so we can push information on the stack. And then it closes the, the, the frame like this, the return address and the back chain. Again, this is stub log. Uh, but sometimes uh, the GT area needs to call an, an external function. And we need to use the call VASM here. That's a, a little bit different. So when calling an, an external function, uh, I still have here the area for push pop information, but I need to allocate two, two slots here and save the back chain because the next function will save the, the return address on the previous frame. So it's waiting this position here for saving the return address, okay? So then the external function creates the frame uh, on the standard array and it works. 
so this uh, this was how we we solved this issue. Uh, the next one, uh, X architecture has instructions that handle memory directly. So uh, power architecture doesn't have this kind of instructions, but the HHVM has some VASMs uh, that has this behavior. Uh, for example, we have uh, VASM instructions like this. That's an add that receives a raster in the memory, memory position. Uh, and then we have a test B that, that just tests the byte part of the, the, the raster. So the solution we use it here is that the HHVM has a lower phase uh, that uh, before it, it generates the, the VASM based on the bytecode, uh, the lower phase is called and then I can replace or change the VASMs that uh, I have there. So, for example, for a power architecture, if I have this VASM, uh, I need to replace this for these other three, that load the value inside the raster, uh, it adds the values, and then start the value in the memory position. The test B uh, is replaced by these three instructions, that just uh, extend the sign of each raster uh, for the byte part, and then uh, I execute the test queue uh, instruction. So uh, the next issue uh, is that X architecture has an, a single instruction that handle uh, a branch with up to 32 bits of offset. Power architecture we have uh, instruction, but it handles just to 26 bits. So uh, 26 bits inside the, the HHVM was not enough. Uh, and we needed to choose uh, these instructions, the BCTR and BCTRL. Uh, but these instructions use a raster for, for the value. So uh, it needs to load the address in, inside the raster uh, and the, it needs up to five instructions. So one instruction for X architecture, we need five, five, six, seven instructions. I will show here. These are the instructions. Uh, so if I have an immediate uh, of 64 bits, this is what's going to happen. So executing this instruction here, that's a load uh, immediate shifted. Uh, it loads the first part of the immediate, and the second instruction just loads the, the second part. This instruction here is a shift instruction that shifts the value for the higher part of the raster. And then we have the other two instructions to read the other part of the immediate. So this is was how we, we solved this issue. Uh, but we need five instructions to do that. And we always need these five instructions. For example, if I have a um, uh, value here that has uh, 16 bits, uh, I would need just one instruction here. Uh, but I cannot just uh, write one instruction because, this, uh, because the HHVM has a, a, a feature that changes the code, the generated code, uh, to another part of the memory. So these instructions can be replaced on the fly, like the, the HHVM is running the JIT code and it can change. So with that, that solution, we have uh, created a race condition. Uh, these uh, is meshable instructions must be atomic, uh, but we have up to five instructions there, right? Uh, the race condition happens uh, like this. We have uh, one thread that runs the code. It reads the code and run, right? Uh, another one is the decoder. The decoder uh, sometimes reads the, the, the JIT that checks if to perform some checks inside the HHVM. And we have the write that is the smash of the instructions, that change that, that instructions. So 
it happens when retranslating the code or relocating the code, as I said. Here, uh, uh, an example of how it happens. Imagine I have this image eight here, and I have these three threads running. The one uh, is the writer, that is the smash instruction. Uh, the first reader is the decoder, and the second reader is the code, is the code execution. So uh, the first reader stops here, and it reads this part of the image eight. The second reader stops here, and it reads this part of the image age. So the other thread just run and changes the, the image age because the, the target code just changed of memory position. So what happens here? The other the the rigid threads continue to execute and it has an invalid value inside the inside the register. So we we take a long time to, to find out what was happening uh, because sometimes the, the code just uh, had a jump for a, a code and some variables were not correct, correct. Uh, and sometimes it was a segmentation fault. So uh, it took a long time to find out what was happening. So, and this was how we solved the issue. Oh, sorry. Uh, the solutions for this issue, initially we, we thought adding a lock um, on the code, but adding a lock you would need to add a lock on the, the ditch area. So I'm creating the ditch to, to make it faster and put a, a lock inside there would be bad for performance. Uh, the second uh, solution we have thought uh, is write the, the address on the ditch code. So uh, uh, I have uh, this data inside the code that will be executed, uh, and I need to add a jump inside uh, the ditch to just jump this data, and then the instruction will uh, read in the previous position of the memory. So uh, actually, this is a solution for the army but we didn't like this, and we used the talk concept. Uh, <clears throat> the talk concept solved the atomicity of the instructions. It reduced the knob emitted by branch and other instructions, and makes ditch code immutable. So, what's the talk? Talk is a table of con contents where your applica application can access static data, and pointers to uh, libraries. Here is, is the solution. Well, uh, this part here is the talk. Uh, the talk has a pointer to the beginning that is holded by the R2 raster. Uh, and each position here is a memory position. So I can read and write atomically because I just need uh, one instruction for that. Uh, before the solution, we had these five instructions here, and then after it, we have these two, uh, up to two instructions because uh, sometimes uh, I don't need a, a, a long offset to, to take the value from the talk. Uh, so this instruction here would be enough. And when it's far from the beginning, uh, I need to use this restriction. Uh, about in the final behaviors, uh, I have talked about the char sign uh, already. Uh, that happens because the C in C++ does not define this behavior. So uh, I can have a, a sign by default, signed or, or unsigned. Another one is this, is the, the shift instruction. So if I have this variable here and I set one to this and print this variable uh, shifted by left 64 times, anyone knows the result? Sorry? Uh, long int is an undefined size, so you don't know the result. Uh, mm, no. <laughs> no, actually not. Well, for X architecture, it's one. 
but for a power architecture it's zero. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's not defined uh, on the language, so uh, the result can, well, uh, depends on the platform. So be careful if you are uh, coding for different platforms with this kind of uh, behavior. Uh, about contributing to H8VM, uh, it was made by GitHub. We have talked with Max Wang, that is the, the main reviewer of this part of the code. Uh, they were very receptive and open to receive the contribution. So it was uh, a very nice relationship with them. And what's missing? Well, um, we just uh, changed the software to work on power architecture, but we didn't have time to analyze the performance of all the code. Uh, we have uh, executed some benchmarks uh, that uh, is from Facebook as well. Uh, some benchmarks are good, even better than x86, uh, but some are, uh, are not so good. So uh, analysis is needed uh, on the performance. Uh, continuous integration, or we have our own CI. Uh, that it runs a build once a, a day. Uh, so uh, the good thing here is have a, a CI inside the Facebook, but they don't want to add uh, a CI for other architectures. So it will not happen even for ARM. And the TC print, that's a tool uh, inside the, the HHVM that shows uh, you which VASM was generated based on which byte code. So we have started to, to fix this, but uh, using the GG, GDB, we could see the, the, the generator, so we didn't finish. And this is all. Any question? Thank you. Hi, sorry, I came in a little bit late, but I was wondering, so a lot of this uh, sort of reconnaissance with the stack, was. did you do all of that work mainly with GDB? Uh, sorry, about the stack on... Oh, looking through the heap and the stack and the registers and stuff. Was all of that in general, you would approach that using the GNU debugger or what sort of tool yes, chain were yes, you doing to do that? Yes, using the GB debugger, yes. Any other questions? Uh, please join me in thanking Leonard. Thank you.